Hi, I'm Jo Burnett, Clinical Director at Valley Equine Hospital, and I am here today with Sonia Nightingale, who's a um, accredited animal and human physiotherapist, to talk about carrot stretches and or baited stretches and the benefits of static core strengthening work for horses. So, Sonia, this is something I find myself recommending a lot for arthritic horses or horses on box rest as part of their rehabilitation program. Yep. It's quite a versatile movement that you can use. And actually is very, very useful for maintaining their mobility, maintaining some of their core strength and muscle stability. But it also has many um, uses with performance horses to maintain mobility um, for the higher movements in dressage, especially where they actually sometimes lose some of the mobility of their neck. We use them a lot in event horses to try and actually keep their core stability and actually in right the way down to normal ponies that are getting a little bit arthritic, getting a little bit stiffer as they get older. And actually they use these exercises to actually keep the mobility in their spines and in their bodies and keep some of their core stability up and keep themselves fitter and functioning for longer during their working lives. I don't know whether I'm um, overthinking it, but I also think some of the ponies enjoy having something to think about, particularly the ones on box rest for a rehab programme, that it's gets their brains engaged again yeah. and reduces boredom stereotypies in the stable and things absolutely like that. it keeps them thinking it gives them something to do um they really enjoy it you do have to watch slightly that some get a little bit nippy and might actually get a little bit bargy about it but done well beta stretches can be really really useful for keeping a, an animal entertained while it is actually confined for quite a long period of time sometimes but we've got some uh, safety gear to show on the video absolutely your DIY hand protection. <laughs> so with a blue piece of moment, here is one that was prepared earlier. Right, this is a, a hand protector that is simply made out of the bottom of a four pint milk container. Chop it off around about two thirds of the way down and make a hole in the middle of the bottom. Now the reason for having this is that some ponies, especially um, the more cobby types, will tend to try and take a lunge for the carrot or whatever it is you're using as the bait for the baited stretch. And that can get quite painful if they get your fingers. So by using a hand guard, you can actually poke the carrot or whatever it is you're using as the bait through the hole, hold onto it with your hand and your hand is protected from the horse actually taking a bite out of your fingers. And of course, other protective gear, gloves and a hard hat for the handler in case the horse rips the lead rope through your fingers, a hard hat Plus. for the person doing the baited stretches and appropriate footwear. Yeah, appropriate footwear. Especially important, um, I would really emphasize the hard hat for the um, person doing the baited stretches because you are spending a lot of time quite close or you may be spending a lot of time quite close to the horse's hind limbs and of course you really don't want to get kicked. So our videos are going to be a brief how-to today as mm. a bit of an aid memoir that I can send out when I say try some carrot stretches but obviously there's more depth to doing them effectively. Um, what would you recommend for people well, would, wanting to try them? I would always recommend that you should have been given your stretches or specific stretches for the specific problems that your animal is suffering yep. and that means that you should have been given them to by your vet or by your musculoskeletal practitioner so your chiropractor your osteopath or your physiotherapist who should be um, registered with a recognized organization such as RAMP, the Register of Animal Musculoskeletal Practitioners, because that way you can ensure that they have been well-trained, are qualified, are insured, and are most importantly, are also up to date. Um, once you have actually been given these exercises by that musculoskeletal practitioner, practitioner or your vet, then these videos will serve as a really useful um, memory jogger so that you can actually uh, remind yourself of the exercises you should be doing and how they should be carried out. So this is our lovely model, Eddie. Now, Eddie's had quite a lot of practice doing baited stretches, hasn't he? Yes, he's a It's important a to understand um, that this horse has actually been um, practicing baited stretches for a very long time. So he knows to stand still um, and he knows how to stretch. And he knows that actually, um, well, because he's done the baited stretches, he's actually become quite flexible and finds them quite easy to do. So remember when you start this process with your own horse that they might not be able to get round to the exactly same positions that he can. They might not be able to stretch as easily, but take them as far as they can without allowing them to actually move their feet or swing their quarters or circle around you. So the warning signs that you, your horse is struggling with the stretch would be if they couldn't get their nose close into their body or if they were sort of swinging round to try to grab 
the treat and then giving up quite quickly. Absolutely. Or mo- having to move their feet and actually pivot around to reach the carrot. Yes. That's your sign that you, this is actually too hard is, at the moment and to take it back a level. Absolutely. That's too far for this horse at that stage. So what you do is just back off until they get to a point where they can just about reach the treat, where they can do it um, without twisting their head round into an awkward position, where they can do it without moving their feet and where they can do it without um, swinging their quarters.